I've got a whole pile of faulty Makita 18V batteries, some flashing error LEDs, some completely dead, and none of them charge or power any Makita tools. Normally fixing these will mean cracking them open and replacing the BMS board, but not anymore. Thanks to this tiny device called OBI that can plug straight into a Makita battery and instantly reveal everything charge cycles, individual cell voltages, and the best of all, with one click unlock the battery to full working order. How cool is that? It is called OBI, Open Battery Information. It uses an Arduino board or running code created by a talented Finnish programmer, Martin Jansson. Huge shout out to him and I leave a link to this project in the video description. It can also be reached by just typing in Google OBI Makita GitHub. And the best part, you only need a few super cheap components to build it. An Arduino Nano board, a pair of 4.7 kilo ohm resistors, a few wires and a Makita charger connector for easy plug-in access. Altogether, the parts cost under 5 bucks online, and I've included all the links in the video description if you want to pick them up yourself. To get the Arduino ready, I first built a simple circuit from the provided diagram. I could have just left everything exposed, it will work fine as proof of concept, but it looks messy and isn't practical. So I designed and 3D printed a minimalistic enclosure that just big enough to fit all components. It took a few iterations to get it dialed in, but it is perfect now. You can grab the 3D print file for free in the video description. Next I soldered two 4.7 kilo ohm resistors to the 5 volt pin. Each resistor goes to D6 and D8 pins, which will be soldered later. I also grabbed a 6 mm spade connector, reshaped it into L shape and soldered a short wire to it. This one was connected to the ground pin on the Arduino. The last piece was the Makita charger cable. I only needed two wires, the second wire on each side so I cut off the rest. Before soldering the final wires, I started assembling everything into the 3D printed case. I designed the case for a tight fit, so it takes a little force to slide the connector in. Then I soldered two yellow wires to D6 and D8 pins as provided in the wiring diagram. The spade terminal presses into a slot in the bottom and a few drops of CE glue insulates it and holds it permanently. When I placed the Arduino into the case, I routed the ground wire through the slot and tucked all the yellow wires so they sit neatly inside. A small drop of CE glue in the corners should hold the Arduino board permanently in place. And it looks a lot cleaner than the proof of concept version. Right? Let's plug it into the computer. With a USB cable in, the board powers up and now I can upload the code. First things first, let's download the Arduino IDE app from the official website. Just choose the version of your operating system, install it and open it up. Once you're inside the program, go to tools and select the board type. In our case, Arduino Nano. And then choose the COM port your Arduino is connected to. For me, that's COM3. Alright, Arduino is connected. Now let's grab the code from GitHub. Navigate to Open Battery Information, Arduino OBI, SRC, main.cpp, select and copy entire code text. Open a new sketch in the Arduino IDA app and paste the code in. Before we can compile anything, we need one library from GitHub. Go to the Open Battery Information GitHub page and download the entire zip file. Extract it and then navigate to Open Battery Information, Arduino OBI, lib and copy the one wire folder. Now, locate where the Arduino IDA app is installed on your computer. In my case, it sits in the Documents folder. Inside that directory, create a new folder called Libraries. Open it and paste the one wire folder inside. With that done, head back to Arduino IDA app and hit the Upload button. It verifies, compiles and uploads code to Arduino. And that's it! Our Arduino Nano is now fully loaded with the OBI software. Since I'm done with all the Arduino work, this is the perfect moment to finish things off with a proper lid. I designed two options you can 3D print, a clean single color version or a multicolor one. Both look great, but for this build, I'm going with a multicolor lid. 3D printing has been a core part of nearly every project I've made, and the Bambi Lab X1 Carbon has taken that to a whole new level. 
And while it shares the nice features you'd expect from a solid entry-level printer, like auto bed leveling, live camera monitoring, and a slick touchscreen, it also steps into pro territory. We are talking about LiDAR-assisted calibration, AI-based first level inspection, a fully enclosed chamber, and support for engineering-grade materials. So whether you're printing regular PLA or tricky stuff like ABS, PC, or PA, this printer handles it like a champ. And that enclosure? That's a game changer for me. My other printers used to sit in a room at home. But now I want everything in a workshop closer where I do stuff. The problem is dust. Dust on the bed, on the rails, even on a filament. It caused all sorts of quality issues and ruined plenty of prints. The enclosed design of the X1C solved that completely. Clean prints, reliable output, zero babysitting. Then there is the updated multi-material system called AMS2 Pro. It is fully enclosed, which helps protect the filament from dust, airborne particles and moisture in the air. No more brittle waterlogged filament. But the best part? It has a built-in filament dryer. That means I no longer have to deal with the separate drying setups. I just load the spools and I know the filament will be dry and ready to go. Plus it auto switches between up to 4 colors or materials and with an expansion hub it could scale up up to 16 colors at a time. Honestly, this setup has everything I need, all in one place. It is reliable, fast and built to handle demanding prints in a real workshop environment. If you are looking to level up your 3D printing game, this combo might be the one. Since the OBI device is already programmed and ready to use, the next step is to download the OBI software, which lets you control it from your computer. Go to the same GitHub page, open the release section, and download the OBI XS zip file. You may need to temporarily disable your antivirus or add the file as an exception, as some antivirus programs incorrectly flag it as a virus. After downloading, unzip the file and run the application. Alright, let's hook up the OBI device to the battery's yellow connector. It is designed to line up easily and the ground spade terminal goes straight to the battery's negative side. I also added number stickers to each battery so we can keep track of the repairs without getting lost. In the app, select the Makita LXT module. Under Select Interface, choose Arduino OBI. Then pick the COM port your Arduino is connected to. Hit Connect to establish the link. And that's it, the module is now talking to the battery's BMS. Let's see what info we can pull and what else we can do with it. And we get quite a lot. Battery model, charge count, status, total voltage, individual cell voltages and temp sensor readings. This one shows as unlocked, but for some reason the LED keeps blinking an error code and the charger won't accept it. The app even lets you test the LED indicator by switching it on and off. But the real MVP here is this button, clear errors. Let's see if it worked. And yes, the LED indicator is back to normal. What about the charger? Will it take the battery now? Yes, it does. Very nice. Let's run through the rest of the batteries. Battery number 2 is locked and despite the high charge cycle count, I don't see anything obviously wrong. So let's clear the errors and read it one more time. That's what I like to see. It is unlocked now. The LED indicator and the charger both confirms it is back in action. Battery number 3 is locked and set a new high score with 161 charge cycles. All cells are nicely balanced, but they are sitting at pretty low voltage. So before unlocking, let's bring the voltage up at least 3 volts per cell. Here comes my favorite universal smart charger, the A7AC. It is using my homemade Makita charging adapter, which I built in another Makita batteries related video you could check out too. In a settings, I choose a 4S configuration on purpose, because the voltage was so low that the charger's protection kicked in and refused to charge when I set to 5S. Now we wait until the total voltage climbs above 15 volts. It only takes a few minutes and now I can safely try unlocking it. And boom, another battery saved and full operational. The fourth battery is locked and unfortunately only supports diagnostics. That means this version of the OBI software can't unlock this particular BMS. But the diagnostic info shows four healthy cell groups inside, which can be reused as donor cells in future repairs. Battery number 5 is locked and every cell inside is completely flat. What a bummer! On a bright side, 
The BMS is still alive, can be unlocked and reused. We'll see if we need it later. The sixth battery is locked and has one dead cell group. So that one needs to be opened up, the dead cells replaced and then unlocked. The seventh battery is locked with two cell groups out of balance. Easy fix, but it requires cracking the case open and balancing those two groups individually. The eighth battery is basically the same story, but only one cell group is out of balance. Also a simple repair. The ninth battery is locked and has one dead cell group, so it also needs a replacement and then unlocking. And the last battery is locked, but I can't spot anything wrong with it. Let's unlock it and try charging. The LED indicator returns to normal, but the charger still won't accept it. The cells all look healthy, but the BMS isn't passing voltage through the main terminals. My best guess? Probably blown fuses inside. But I'll have to open it up to confirm and solve. So far, I managed to unlock and fully revive three Makita batteries, and I didn't even have to open them. Proof right here, they all still have the original white Makita warranty seals. All of that was possible thanks to this tiny OBI device. It also helped me diagnose the issues in the remaining seven batteries, which I'll be fixing and showing the process in the next video. So stay tuned and I'll see you next time.